Hello and welcome to episode 8, where we'll go through how to use the Sphere widget demonstrated in the Corvair update, as well as how to curve a missile around an asteroid. Missiles are at the core of Nebula's fleet command. Being able to quickly fire off a salvo under pressure may be the difference between victory or defeat. The Sphere widget is the tool that allows us to do this, and by mastering this tool, you'll be able to open up a number of different gameplay and tactical options. So let's jump in and start to see what the Sphere widget can do. First, the Sphere widget is used currently for two things. The first is the set heading function under the movement controls, which when selected will automatically open the Sphere widget and it will be shown with a yellow sphere to indicate that it's non-combat. Otherwise, the Sphere widget is predominantly used for firing missiles. When the order panel is opened and either a Thunderhead, a Squall or a Gale missile is selected, the Sphere widget will appear. With the widget activated, by moving your mouse around, we can set the direction that we want the missile to go. Note, it is easiest to set the direction of the missiles by operating on the far side of the widget away from the player. We set the distance that we want to fire the missile in by holding down control and moving the mouse in and out to expand or contract the red sphere. When setting the direction, if we move the mouse through the ship, we can target on the other side of the sphere. We also have the ability to pan around when the sphere widget is open so that we can change direction but always make sure that we're operating on the other side of the sphere widget. Some key information is displayed under the cursor of the mouse. It shows us not only the keyboard shortcuts to use for setting a waypoint, adding targets, but arguably the two most important pieces of information being the cumulative distance and the time of flight. Missiles have a 14,000 meter range at this point in time, and as we set waypoints, this will show our cumulative distance before they self-detonate. And as we increase our distance, the time of flight will increase. This will give us a rough indication of how long it'll take for our missiles to fly, noting that this is to the last waypoint and will not include the amount of time from the last waypoint to the target. Like ships, we can set waypoints for our missiles, and we do this by holding shift, which will then create a new sphere widget that we can use at that selected waypoint. While on the tactical map, we can use the point of interest feature to line up our missiles with the target. So let's have a demonstration of this by firing a full salvo of missiles around the asteroid to our rear and then impacting on the ship to our half left. Due to the distance that we are going to be covering, it's easier to do this in the tactical map. So let's open the tactical map, which lets us do all the same functions as we've previously demonstrated. And we'll set the first waypoint just past this top asteroid using the orange rings around that asteroid as an indication for elevation. We're going to change the map's position to make it easier on ourselves to make the next waypoint. And we'll now set the approach vector. Using the point of interest circles, we're going to line up our attack missiles with the track 3124. The missile seeker cone range is 2000 meters, so we don't need to put the missiles exactly on top of the ship, but just a little bit before. Here I may have actually gone a little bit too close to the ship, so we'll see how this plays out. Now we can execute the order, and we can watch it play out on the tactical map, and we'll also follow the missiles in to see if, if we hit the ship.
Here we can see I did not allow sufficient time for the missiles to acquire their target, resulting in a number of missiles overshooting and exploding harmlessly. So let's try this again. Behind this asteroid that I'm indicating now, there is a frigate that we can't see. Rather than using the tactical map this time, I'll use it in game. So I know that from the tactical map, it's going to be about 4,000 meters outwards. So using the sphere widget, I'll approximate a distance because there's no other intervening terrain out there for about a 4,000 meter run before I set the first waypoint. With the first waypoint set, I'll now set all the missiles into a spread and hopefully we'll get a few hits on target. If we position ourselves behind the rock, we'll be able to see not only the curve as the missiles hit the waypoint and start to move in, but as they start to guide themselves onto the frigate. It appears I've done a much better job this time round with most of the missiles hitting the target, destroying the frigate. Using these techniques, you can attack from unexpected angles where you think point defense may be minimal or to get a surprise on the enemy using terrain to mask most of your missile's signature. If this looks complicated, all it requires is a bit of practice. However, in the meantime, we can use TRPs or target reference points to assist us or speed this up. Opening the order menu with a right click and going to signal, we select TRP and using the radial wheel just like we did for movement, we can set the TRP both in game and on the tactical map. From there, we select our weapon and then by using the point of interest functionality, we simply line up the two circles on the sphere widget, being quickly being able to set to TRP Alpha and TRP Bravo before we attack the final ship. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you've learned a little bit more about how to use the sphere widget, particularly when it comes to the employment of missiles. I hope the quality is getting a little bit better. We've got a new desktop that we're running on, but we're still having to rebalance a few things. So we'll continually try to bring you better and better quality tutorials as we go forward.